Hi there folks, my name is Cole, and today on Investigate, Explore, Discover, we're going to be looking at how well masks work to stop COVID-19. We're going to be looking at two aspects of it today. We're going to be looking at how well masks work as personal protective equipment to filter out aerosols in the environment to prevent them from getting to your face, and how well masks work to prevent aerosols generated from your face getting into the environment. Today, we're talking about COVID-19, caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus which you've probably heard about. And if you haven't heard about it, let me know where you've been hiding for the past year. Because it's been all over the place. Now, SARS-CoV-2 is a coronavirus and is spread primarily through aerosolized droplets. We generate aerosolized droplets in many different ways. We can generate them from doing things such as talking, coughing, sneezing, and even singing. COVID was first identified in China in December of 2019 and quickly spread throughout the world, prompting the World Health Organization to declare it a pandemic in March of 2020. COVID has many different symptoms, but probably the most distinct symptom is a new loss of taste and smell. As I mentioned before, COVID has spread rapidly throughout the world, with daily new confirmed cases climbing up until about the beginning of 2021, whereby they dropped. Unfortunately, right now, we're on an upward tick. Throughout the world, there have been more than 130 million confirmed COVID cases. And as you can see, they do not affect every country the same. There are some countries that just have more cumulative cases of COVID. With more cases of COVID, this contributes to increased risk. In fact, to date, there have been over 2.8 million deaths where COVID was a contributing factor. As you can see, this is affecting countries which just have higher cumulative COVID case counts. Now, COVID's a pretty interesting disease in that it has a high reproduction number, which means that a single infected person can infect many other people. COVID's reproduction number is 2.5, which is very high, especially when we compare it to seasonal influenza infections. To give you an example of how this works in a population, if a thousand people are infected with a disease that has an R value of one, one person infected infects one other person. So as time goes by, you have a linear increase of infections. However, by increasing the R value by even just 0.1, as time goes by, you start to see an exponential increase in infections. Now we want to try and prevent this, mainly because our healthcare systems just can't handle a large influx of people needing to go to the hospital. So there are measures that we can take to slow down the rate of infection. Some of these measures include wearing a mask, uh, staying six feet apart, avoiding crowds, and getting a vaccine when it becomes available to you. Now, masks are probably the easiest thing we can all do. And they protect not only yourself from aerosols in the environment, but also help you protect everyone else around you if you happen to be infected and you don't know it by preventing the aerosol spread from you. In fact, if more of the population use masks that are effective at blocking viral particles, we can all help contribute to decreasing the reproduction number of COVID. When choosing a mask, there are many important features to consider. You want to be choosing a mask that has two or more layers of washable, breathable fabric that fits over both your mouth and your nose, that fits snugly against the sides of your face and has a wire loop on top to help the mask conform to your nose. You do not want to be using masks that are made of fabric that make it difficult to breathe, such as vinyl, or masks that have a vent, which actually just allow the virus to go out into the environment. You also want to avoid using medical grade masks because those need to be left for healthcare workers. So try and avoid wearing N95 masks. You can also wear gaiters as long as they are two or more layers, but face shields are not recommended because their effectiveness is unknown. So ultimately you want your mask to fit over your mouth and nose and to fit snugly. As much as I wish I didn't have to say this, you need to say it in that don't wear masks around your neck, on your forehead. Like, are you trying to protect your thoughts? Don't wear the mask under your nose, just on your nose, on your chin. Don't have it dangling from your ear and not on your arm. It's not an accessory. As important as it is to choose the right type of mask, it's also important to know how to take your mask off. 
When taking your mask off, you want to untie it by the strings around your ears and just handle it by those strings. You want to fold it together and then put it in a bag to wash for later. Basically pretend the outside of your mask is just covered in poop. You don't want that anywhere, so try and avoid that as much as possible. Now, this brings us to the important question in all science, which is why is it important to look at this? Why is it important to know how effective different masks are in preventing COVID-19? Well, it's important to determine the effectiveness of many different commonly used masks, so that way, as part of the public, we know what to use. And by doing studies on these masks, we can get a quantitative measure of how effective these masks are at filtering out particles as well as preventing particle penetration or side escape from our masks. This brings us to the first paper today, which is called the evaluation of cloth masks and modified procedure masks as personal protective equipment for the public during the COVID-19 pandemic by Clapp et al from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, USA. And in this study, they evaluate the fitted filtration efficiency of various consumer grade and improvised face masks, as well as popular modifications of medical procedure masks that are intended to improve fit or comfort. Now, in this paper, they use many common masks, such as a two layer nylon mask, a bandana folded like a bandit or in a rectangle, they use a non-woven polypropylene mask, single layer polyester mask, uh, a gaiter or three layer cotton mask. For medical masks, they compare just a normal mask compared to the sides tied and tucked in, which is recommended for better protection. They also test the effectiveness of a 3D printed ear guard and a claw type hair clip. Furthermore, they test the effectiveness of fitting a mask to your face with rubber bands or with nylon hoisery. So they tested all these masks with the OSHA quantitative fit testing protocol, which requires you to bend, not that type of bending, but the normal type of bending, uh, to read a book, to move your head left and right and up and down. And they compiled all of their results into a list. Now, unsurprisingly, the N95, which is the gold standard, performs the best. So if you want, pause the video and look at the list to see the specific fitted filtration efficiencies, but I'm going to summarize them anyway. So the top three masks for use as personal protective equipment against the aerosols in the environment are the two layer nylon mask with ear loops with the nose bridge that has been washed, as well as the mask fitted with the nylon hoisery and the rubber bands. The worst masks to use as personal protective equipment are the gator, the polypropylene mask with fitted ear loops, and the three layer cotton mask with ear loops. Now, this information is really interesting and is quite significant because it tells us a lot. It shows the comparative effectiveness of common masks as safety equipment. Furthermore, it gives us quantifiable values to measure how well particles are filtered out of the environment into our faces. Now, as I mentioned before, the other part of masks are preventing aerosols from your mouth from reaching those around you. And the second paper that we're going to look at today looks at just that. This paper is called COVID-19 Mask Efficacy is Dependent on Both Fabric and Fit by Darby et al. from the Cork Institute of Technology in Bishopstown, Cork, Ireland. And in this paper, they present a novel method of measuring mask performance by assessing fabric penetration and leakage, basically to poor fit. Now, what they use is they use a conical laser over top of a dummy to visualize all of the aerosols coming out of the dummy's mouth. They use this dummy here and show when people cough how the aerosols expel into the environment. They also compare this expulsion when wearing many different types of masks. So they use a single layer textile mask, a three layer textile mask, they use a bandana, and they also use a common medical mask, also known as a type 2 medical mask, and an FFP1 mask, which filters at least 80% of the particles. When comparing the brightest intensity frames, you can see that the medical masks have very little aerosol penetration through them. But if they're not fit properly, which it looks like the medical mask was not fit great on the dummy, you have uh, air leakage out of the top. This is compared to 
probably the worst mask that they tested, which was the single layer mask, which just spreads out the aerosols from the mask, not really making it that great. Now, this information is also very significant because it qualitatively shows how aerosols are passing through common masks and can be used as a tool for mask designers to improve performance without diminishing the breathability of masks. Now, when looking at this data, I had a couple questions that I think could lead further research. The first question is, can these studies be combined together to create some sort of standard which all masks are tested against? So that way, as the public, we can know what masks are most effective and we should be wearing. Furthermore, they tested many different types of commonly used masks, but are there other materials that are more effective at filtering out particles from your mouth to the environment and from filtering out stuff from the environment to your mouth? Furthermore, these are just commonly used masks and what we know of right now. So are there better mask designs out there that can more effectively prevent viral transmission? My final question though, is what sort of ideas or questions popped into your head when hearing about this information? So let me know about them in the comments section below. Ultimately though, I hope that you learned something and more importantly, you enjoyed your time doing so. So if you did give this video a like and subscribe for more in the future. And with that, I will see you next time.